Dear classmates, welcome back to the delay test chapter. In this video, we are going to introduce details about transition delay 4. First, we will talk about force simulation for transition delay 4. And then, we will explain how to generate tests for transition delay 4. First, we need to define the detection of a transition delay 4. Consider these two input end gate. How are we going to detect input A slow to rise 4? In vector 1, first we control A to 0. Then in vector 2, we generate a test to detect A stuck at 0, 4. This table shows the input pattern to detect the input transition delay 4 of this end gate. If we want to detect A slow to rise 4 in the first vector V1, A is controlled to 0. In the second vector, we launch a rising transition on A. At the same time, B must be 1 so that A stuck at 0, 4 can be detected. Similarly, to detect A slow to 4, 4 in vector 1, first we control input A to 1. In the second vector, we generate a vector to detect A stuck at 1, 4. As is shown in this table, in vector 1, A is 1, in vector 2, a is 0, and the input B must be 1, so that A stuck at 1, 4 can be detected. From this table, we can see that the detection of transition delay 4 is actually very similar to the detection of single stuck at 4. Please note that transition delay 4 assume the delay for size is very large. So we do not have any requirement about the propagation path when generating the pattern. This slide shows the force simulation for transition delay 4. Transition delay 4 simulation actually can be built on existing single stack at 4 simulation. We just add one more criterion to check the value on vector 1. For vector 2, it's actually the same as traditional single stack at 4 simulation. Take the following circuit for example. Given this pair of test patterns where V1 equals 0, 1, 0, and the V2 equals 0, 0, 0. When we force simulate vector 2, we know that B stuck at 1 is detected by vector 2. Also, C stuck at 1 is detected. E stuck at 1, G stuck at 1, J stuck at 0, and the K stuck at 0. These single stuck at 4 are detected by vector 2. Now we check the value of vector 1. In vector 1, B is equal to 1, so we have a falling transition. Therefore, B slow to 4, 4 can be detected. Similarly, in vector 1, we have a falling transition on E and the G. So E and G slow to 4, 4 are detected. J slow to rise 4 is also detected because J is equal to 0 in vector 1. And uh, similarly, K slow to rise 4 is also detected. Totally, we can detect 5 transition delay 4 in this pattern. Please note that C slow to 4 4 
cannot be detected because there was no falling transition. At the same time, Q slow to fall fall cannot be detected by this pair of test patterns because Q stuck at 1 fall cannot be detected by vector 2. Now it's time for you to practice. Given this same circuit and these two pattern tests, V1 equals to 0, 1, 0, and V2 equals to 1, 1, 1. Consider three transition delay faults. A slow to rise, H slow to rise, and C slow to rise fault. Please tell us which fault can be detected by this pair of test patterns. Now pause the video and work on this problem. Have you got the answer correctly? First, let's work on the correct logic values. For the good circuit, we have a 1 for both V1 and V2 and a 0 here and we have a 0 to 1 rising transition and also 0 to 1 rising transition at K. As we can see, we can check vector 2 first. For vector 2, A stuck at 0, 4 can be detected. Also, H stuck at 0, 4 can also be detected. However, C stuck at 0, 4 cannot be detected by vector 2. So C slow to rise 4 cannot be detected. Now let's check vector 1. Since we have a rising transition here, so A slow to rise 4 is detected. And we have a rising transition here, so H slow to rise 4 is also detected. So two of the faults have been detected by this pattern. Have you got it correctly? Now let's move on to test generation for transition delay 4. Transition delay 4 ATPG is actually very similar to single stuck at 4 ATPG. We first generate a single stuck at 4 pattern for V2 and then we control the value in V1 then we are done. Consider the following circuit. Let's generate a pair of test patterns for G slow to 4 fold. Let's use the potent algorithm. In the second vector V2, the objective is to generate a single stuck at 4 test pattern for G stuck at 1, 4. So we backtrace to input B and we control B to 0 in vector 2. But this is not enough. So we backtrace again to input C and we control C to 0 in vector 2. With this input, we generate a test pattern for G stuck at 1, 4 successfully. Now the objective is to control G to 1 in vector 1. So we backtrace again to B and we control B to 1 in vector 1. In this way, we have generated a pair of test patterns 
where v1 is equal to x1x and v2 is equal to x0,0. In summary, we first generate a single stuck F4 test pattern in vector 2 and then we control the value of the fourth side in vector 1. Then we are done. Now it's time for you to practice. Consider H slow to rise 4. Please generate a test pattern using the potent algorithm. Have you got the answer correctly? To generate a test pattern in vector 2, we need to generate a pattern for H stuck at 0, 4. So we backtrace to input A and uh, we control A to 1 in vector 2 but this is not enough so we backtrace to b again we control b to 1 in vector 2 in this way we can generate a test to detect h stuck at 0 4 now we need to generate a test pattern in v1 to control h to 1. So we backtrace to A and uh, control A to 0. In this way, we can control H to 0 in the first vector. Then we are done. The test pattern generated is 0xx for vector 1 and 11x one, one for vector 2. Have you got it? In summary, the pros and cons of Transition Delay 4 can be summarized in this page. Transition Delay 4 can be leveraged on mature single stack F4 ATPG algorithm. So it's very efficient and the full coverage can be very high. ATPG is very easy because the test generator does not have to pay attention on the propagation path. However, because single stuck F4 ATPG tends to trace short paths, so the test pattern generated may not be effective for small delay defects. Nevertheless, transition delay fault test patterns are very popular and uh, are widely considered as the most basic delay testing that should be done for many products. In summary, in this video, we have shown details about transition delay force simulation, which is based on existing single stock cap force simulation. We first simulate the second vector, and then we check the value for the first vector. Also, we show details about transition delay for test generation, which can be based on existing single stack F4 ATPG. We first generate a single stack F4 pattern for vector 2, and then we control the foresight to an opposite value for vector 1. This is the end of this video. Thank you.